sleep. We wake them up, wake up, the champs is in. Champion, we won't back in, back in. Wipe my sins, wipe it, wipe it. They can't win, they can't win. No new friends, no new friends. Football fans, football. They sleep again, they sleep. We wake them up, wake up, the champs is in. Yeah, yeah. Coach, we find ourselves at the foot of the Rockies, Denver, Colorado, for this edition of the NFL on EA Sports. Just a short time ago, sounds loud enough to reverberate across the Rockies. They're ready for football in Denver as the Broncos get set to do battle with the Seattle Seahawks. No more training camp, no more exhibitions. The 2018 NFL season on EA Sports is underway. That'll be taken in the end zone. And the decision to bring it out will cost him about five yards as he'll get this only back to the 20. here on first down got a man over the middle and it's complete and they'll get it all the way up about five yards shy of midfield a really nice gain of 25 yards the big play to start him out has him at the 45 already Now a first carry for Isaiah Crowell. And some room to roam now. And he'll be brought down at the 50 after a gain of about five. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice solid gain. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. before he could even get started. He lost four there, and it's third down. All right, quick observation, Brandon, because early on in this game, I'm seeing linebackers playing with their noses close to the line of scrimmage. And my guess is the wheels are turning on that other sideline. As a play caller, you're filing that away right now, aren't you? Yeah, you're trying to find that opportunity later on when you can play action them or stick something to them between the second and the third level. Now Wilson. And oh, look at that, a diving catch. They get nine yards there, and they get a first down. Every coach we ever talk to says to his team before the game, quick start, guys. Let's get out of the gate fast. <laughs> How about that? They took his lesson to heart, didn't they? They did exactly that. A nice diving catch here on the game's opening drive. So after two first downs, they get another here. First and 10 at the 45. First down carry now for Crowell. So a nice job to break the one tackle, but not much daylight after that as he's brought down. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Cut. 
Now a first carry for their fullback. And he'll get inside the 40 to maybe the 38-yard line. Two yards on the carry there, and it's going to lead him to third down. A good chance this is four down territory if they're unable to convert. But right now looking at a third and three. They'll try to run for it with Corral. And they went the wrong way there. Losing yardage back at the 43-yard line. Call that a loss of five yards on the play. And it'll be fourth down. And on their first drive, the offense staying out there. They're going to go for it on fourth. They'll try and throw for it with Wilson. Forced out to his left. He can run for it, and he will. How about them biting off 15 yards there on the fourth down attempt and keeping the drive alive? You know, I don't think this is the last time we'll see that in this game. This guy has mobility, and they want to use his legs in the game plan. So there will be designed runs as well as his scrambles. Here's a give to Crowell, and he went backwards. He'll be down at the 30. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. Uh, it's a tough one right there. He ran right into the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stuff that one for a loss. I think quarterbacks got to see that. Got to find a way to audible into something a little more advantageous. Maybe just a slight detour on what's been a strong drive. Here's second and 11. with Wilson firing quickly here and that's complete and he's able to get it to the edge of the red zone at the 20 yard line and they'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down well, I know from past experience before you actually play a game you visualize what's going to happen and I don't know anyone who doesn't visualize themselves being in the center of what's going on that's three catches for him here in the early going he's got to like the way this is started absolutely three catches on any drive is good opening drive that's a tone setter on third down Crowell and he'll at least get him inside the red zone here down to about the 19. he needed two he got one and that's going to leave him with fourth down at a yard and now before they run this play on fourth and one, we're going to get a break and a timeout. They'll have two remaining as we step aside here in this first quarter. Sebastian Janikowski to try the Seahawks field goal. This from 36 yards out. And that is no good. And this will remain a scoreless game. Well, that opening drive looked good for a moment there, but they'll wind up being turned away thanks to the missed field goal. And those especially hurt when you come into a game on the road. You're trying to get things to go your way early, and now you suffer a setback right out of the gate. Ready? You're waiting? Ready, my check. And they'll go on the ground. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. Go, so the opening play of the drive goes backwards. Now they'll come up on second and 12. And on the ground they go with a running back. And he'll take it ahead to the 28-yard line. Barkevius Mingo in that time on the tackle. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, a guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. Breeze now to throw. And that's the first NFL catch for Cortland Sutton. It's a gain of 20 and picking up the first. And a nice start there to the aerial attack to pick up the first. 
And I think preseason is officially over now. Getting into the groove of the regular season, that's a great way to get started. First drive of the season, what a nice completion. Throwing on first down is Breeze. Looking deep here for Macklin. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. Well, that certainly looked like something that they discussed all week in practice getting ready for this one. Take the big shot right out of the gate. At worst, you'll open up the defense a little bit, loosen them up, have them back on their heels. Ready. Ready. And they'll go ground game here with a tailback. Finds a seam inside the 40. The 20, 10, 5, and all the way home for a Bronco score. A big play there with his first career touchdown in his first career game. And the Broncos have taken the early lead. Extra point from McManus is good. And it's now a 7-0 game. McManus on to kick this one off. That's fielded in the end zone. And he'll wind up about four yards shy of where he would have been if he had taken a knee as they'll start at the 21-yard line. Well, the Seahawks heading out here on offense. Let's talk about last year. One to forget, Charles, in the Pacific Northwest. Seven and nine. A seat on the couch in January for these players, and that broke a streak of five straight seasons of double-digit victories and a playoff berth. And I think they lost their identity a little bit along the way. On offense, they've always been a run-first team, established a line of scrimmage, and bludgeoned people. They didn't have that at all. Their offense ran through Russell Wilson, and he was magical, led the league in touchdown passes but they are at their best when they're able to run the ball first and take control. On defense, age caught up with them. The Legion of Boom, no longer the same, and many of those guys will not be with the team in 2018. They will be starting over, but they have a smile on their face. I think this is a challenge that their head coach, Pete Carroll, relishes, and they look forward to being the underdog in the NFC West. Second and 10, it's Wilson again. And this time he's got the hookup, it's complete. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. First catch of the new season for him, and he picks up the first. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Now a handoff to Crowell. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half, and some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. Alongside my broadcast partner, Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon hits the Seahawks with a football. They'll toss it to Crowell. Spins past it. And now they're going to get him down right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play, and it's going to bring up a third down. Some of these play calls, I think they're a little conservative. But you know me, because it's easy to set up in this booth, right, and make all the calls and, and think I'm going to be correct. But I would like to see them open things up, because otherwise this defense is going to gang up on the run and set them down. Losing four yards that time, and now it's fourth down. On fourth down, ready to punt, Michael Dixon. Back deep to return it is Lucky Whitehead. He'll send this one into the mile high air, and it's a good one. This is taken at the 10. Oh, good move. A nice job on the return there, 16 yards. And the Broncos take over, first down and 10. 
These Broncos coming off two years of not making the playoffs after winning Super Bowl 50. And last year in Vance Joseph's first season, they went 5-11, had an eight-game losing streak. Now, look, the defense remained elite. But the quarterback carousel and the general lack of offensive production really led to a disappointing 2017. And in order for them to reverse that, they've got to continue to play to their strength, which is their defense. And they did that by drafting Bradley Chubb at number five overall, the defensive end out of North Carolina State. Gives them extra pass rushers. But on offense, they made a peace offering to their defense by signing Case Keenum at quarterback. That should calm down that position and open up possibilities on the offensive side of the ball. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. He lost two there, and it's third down. Now that screen there on second down certainly didn't develop how they had hoped. Is that one they should have even tried, or is that one the quarterback sticks in his pocket? I think the latter. I like what you said there, because trying is one thing. We can second guess just about every call. But in this case, when you realize that it's broken down, just throw it at the feet of your intended receiver so that no one can pick it off, right? You don't have the ball tipped up in the air, and you come back and try and pick up the first down on third down. That way you don't lose any yardage. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. We know it's not an easy job to go out and catch passes when people are trying to tackle you and knock the ball away, but the bottom line is that's a pass he's got to have and a pass he should have caught. And the punt team on now as this one's sent away. Now it's Lockett. An excellent return that time, 26 yards. And the Seahawks will have great field position to start this drive. They take over on the short side of the field. The Seahawks offense now, they get set to go back to work. They were forced to punt last time, and I doubt sincerely that they'll have to punt here because they're gifted with terrific field position. I don't even want to think about the idea that they would end up punting starting with this type of field position. Neither do they. Great starting spot. Great opportunity to run your full playbook. They want to take a shot here. They can go ahead and do it. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. Seems like this defense, especially the secondary, has really been contesting about every throw in this first half. Remind me of a good half-court defensive basketball team. Every time a pass is thrown, they're right there in good, good defensive position, able to affect the play. And the tight end, Dixon, left side. And they're able to get this one past the 30 to the 25-yard line. First catch of the new season for him, and he picks up the first. I like how they work the tight end on a nice little under route there. And if you're going to give him that much space, he's not even going to catch the football. He's going to run away from me a little bit, and that's exactly what he just did there, picking up extra yardage. Now it's Crowell, and they take him down, losing yardage back at the 27. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Perfectly designed blitz right there. They took that one from the grease board to the field because they were able to free up their linebacker to get into the backfield and spill the play. his way forward here for a good little game. Adam Jones, the longtime NFL corner, able to get him down. And that's one of the reasons you like to blitz even on rundowns. It confuses the blocking assignments. It doesn't allow those offensive linemen to get up to the second level. And the Seahawks on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This is third and seven. From the shotgun, Wilson dancing to his left. He may try and run for this. And he doesn't quite make it, taking it with it, an eyelash. Dropped at the one. The rushing numbers for Wilson may be down from earlier in his career, but he's still a threat to go, showing it there, picking up the first down. Come on, let's go. Out of the gun, here's Wilson. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. Bradley Roby there defensively. 
They've been playing sound fundamental defense thus far and able to keep this offense from creating a major dent on the scoreboard. And able to force the incompletion, but still waiting for that game-changing play. You feel like it's coming, the first sack, the first turnover. In a sense, they're playing old-school defense right now. The new-school defense is what you said, taking the ball away. Second and goal, one man in the backfield. That's Crowell. They go play action now. Wilson. And he's got it. Caught in the end zone for the Seahawk touchdown. Will Disley with his first career touchdown in his first career game. And the Seahawks just an extra point away from tying this thing up. Janikowski adds the extra point, and we are tied at seven. So we're right back where we started, all even as the kick's away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. This offense trots back out there now, and as they do, Charles, one thing to point out that we saw a second ago are some of the new rules in the NFL this year regarding kickoffs. Yeah, nowadays, the kickoff team, no more running starts. Remember that when you can you kind of circle a guy around, and here he goes? No more. You have to start, you know, close to the ball, and when it's kicked, then you get to take off and go. So you can't build up your speed that way. Also, when you're returning it, remember those wedges that we used to say where guys would form together, two or three guys? No more of those. So it'd be a lot more man-on-man, one-on-one blocking. And also they have rules about where people have to be when the ball's kicked, where they have to be when the ball's caught. So to me, it's much more like a punt return than it is an actual kickoff return. So I'm eager to see if teams now take their punt returners, those nifty guys who make people miss in the open field, and make them the kickoff returners as well, because I think you can still get big plays in this area if you have the right people back there. Once again, they'll come up on the 26-yard line, second and 10. Hey, easy. Ready. You ready? You ready? What's up? Breeze again here on second and 10. And the catch made, this is Emmanuel Sanders. And they finally get him down, but not before he reaches the 34. A huge play there for Denver, and even 40 yards. So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10, just outside the 30. Ready, ready, ready. On first and 10, here's Breeze. And Sutton hauls it in over the middle. And he gets this one inside the 15, just a yard or two shy of the 10. A good pick up there, a 22. Broncos with their first trip to the red zone thus far. It's first and 10 from the 12. Now, Breeze again. Oh, that was dangerous. Throw it into coverage, almost picked. But instead, they'll keep it on second down. It's been my observation there's been a nice variety of play calling defensively. You and I often talk about an offense's ability to keep a defense off balance with what they're doing. I think the converse has been true in this game. Yeah, I think you're right. They seem to have gone off tendency quite a bit, but only the second quarter, a lot of time to change things. And not even back to the line of scrimmage this time as they're on him quickly once more. And now the Seahawks are going to call another timeout. That's their second, so they'll have one remaining here in this second quarter. We'll be right back. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. From the gun, it's Breeze. And this is going to be incomplete. Knocking it away there defensively, Justin Coleman. Certainly looked like they were getting ready to convert there on third down, but what an effort to get his hand on that one, knock it away, and brings up a fourth down decision. And McManus able to put it through, and they take the lead here now at 10-7. to So the drive stalls out inside the 15-yard line, but they do get three. 
And I've talked with enough players nowadays that when they have these types of kicks, that no one says to their guy, hey, that's just like making an extra point, piece of cake. Because the extra point is not a piece of cake anymore. <laughs> but kicking a field goal from that distance, just give him confidence and let him knock it through. The Seahawks offense now, they get ready to head back onto the field. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. They go play action here on first down. Sliding out of the pocket. He's going to air this out for Baldwin. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. A minute 57 to go in this first half. Back to Denver right after this. Line of scrimmage again the 25, second and 10. Again on second and 10, it's Wilson. He's going to fire one deep over the middle. Into heavy traffic and it's intercepted. Picked off by the free safety, Darian Stewart. And the return this time will go out to the 42-yard line. Well, they didn't exactly show patience there, did they? Just down the score, they come out firing right away and compound things by throwing an interception. They put their defense in a really tough spot. And they'll go with a ground attack here. And forget about finding a lane. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. And what that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. 21, 21. Now Breeze throwing on second down. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. It's an eight-yard pickup, and that'll make it third down. Sammy, Sammy! Bree's going to throw. And he'll be hit as he releases it. And that'll fall incomplete. Pressure, and that's certainly going to be a key to this game going forward. And that time, they were able to get in there and influence the throw. And remember, quarterbacks got to get rid of it. They don't have the tuck rule that they can fall back on anymore. And he has got it from 55 yards away. That was never in doubt. They got the interception, but very little movement after, and that forces him to settle for three. And it, it does feel like settling when that happens, doesn't it? It certainly does, but we got to give a lot of credit where it's due, and that's to the defense because they've ran onto the field. It's what we call sudden change, right? Interception, you've got to go put out the fire, and they did, holding them to a field goal. The Seahawks offense now, they get ready to come back onto the field. And what do you think goes on here in this situation? If you got the football, you're trailing, you're back in your own territory with just a little time. Do you try? something you're thinking about jump starting your team right you just mentioned it. they're down they're trying to get back into the game but you've got to figure if something a 50 50 ball here and it's intercepted picked off by justin simmons and a great move again and he will take this across midfield and down to the 48 yard line Okay, it's real simple to say from here, but we know that sometimes as a quarterback, you've got to know when to say when and just throw it away. Flushed out to the right, tries to make something out of nothing here, and he winds up floating one downfield. Think it's intercepted. So after the INT, it's Breeze. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. But he kind of forced that one there, didn't he? It's almost like he predetermined where he was going to go with the football. Yeah, he wasn't really going through progressions. He wanted to go to his top guy. You do that against this defense, they'll make you pay, won't they? Yeah, they certainly will. They react very quickly to the thrown football. And his throw's going to be incomplete. The linebacker, Bobby Wagner, able to get back in coverage and knock it free. The turnover put him in great field position. They don't want to squander it with third down coming up. No, not at all. And you know what else you do? You make your defense mad. Yeah. They got you the football, gave you a great opportunity. You've got to cash in and get some points. 
On third down, it's Lindsey, and that play will go nowhere. Losing yardage back near midfield at the 49. He loses four, and it brings up fourth. The Broncos send out their punter now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. So we've reached halftime here on opening weekend as we'll check in for the first time with the newest member of our Madden family. It's Jonathan Coachman with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Take it away, Coach. We'll see if week one fatigue becomes any kind of a factor as we are back underway in the second half. That'll be taken in the end zone. And the decision to come out is going to cost him five as he's taken down right at the 20. Here comes the Broncos offensive unit here as they'll have it first to begin this third quarter. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking to extend that lead. And this is where I enjoy talking about one of my favorite subjects, tendency breakers or counters as I also like to call them. You've done things in a certain way in the first half and they've had ability to see what you've done. They're going to make their adjustments. So guess what? You adjust yourself and try and stay ahead of the pace because you are looking for some separation in this ball game. The adjustment to the adjustment. Without a doubt. <laughs> show them one thing, hit them with something else. Ready, yellow wing. And they'll run it here. And the window closes quickly. He'll only get up to the 22-yard line. He'll pick up only a yard there, and it'll leave him with a third and seven. Sometimes your philosophies get challenged at times you don't want them to. They did try to stick to the running game on the first two plays. Didn't amount to much. And now facing a third and long at the outset of this drive. Throw left side. It's reeled in by Hamilton. And he's able to get it to the 31, and that's enough for the first. First catch of the new season for him, and he picks up the first. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Four down, four down. Ready. Yellow lady, yellow lady. Left, left, left. On first down, Breeze. Looking for Sanders here on the deep ball. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. We've seen good cover skills on display throughout this game, really from both teams. And there's another nice example there of them making it difficult to complete a pass. Line of scrimmage, the 31 as they line up second and 10. On play action, now Breeze. Looking for Sanders, and it's intercepted. Picked off at the 45. And a super return as he gets us all the way down inside the 25-yard line. First possession of the third quarter, an interception, so maybe a second-half tone setter. Indeed, and not the tone they wanted to set. That's the equivalent of running out the wrong door and running into your pool instead of running out onto the field. A real dud for that one. Has that happened to you before? No, but I've heard stories about teams actually doing that back in the good old days. And nearly picked off there, almost intercepted. Instead, second down. And that's one he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there, need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. Play action. It's Wilson. A little dump off for Corral. He gets away from one. And on this one, he'll get to the 15, right at the 15-yard line. It's a gain of nine yards, and that'll make it third and one. Crowell, and this play goes nowhere, losing yardage back to the 15. That'll make it fourth down after a loss of one. 
Now, they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. And no signs of the field goal unit. They're going for it on fourth down. From the gun, it's Wilson being chased out left. And he gets the first down yardage before he's brought down just outside the 10 at the 11. A solid pickup of five and a very solid fourth down conversion and defensively pure frustration. This is Crowell. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter. No time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. They'll run it again with Crowell. Slipped one tackle, but no more as he's knocked to the deck behind the line of scrimmage. And they'll lose a yard that time, and that's going to lead to a third down. Oftentimes, when you're not winning at the point of attack for an offensive line, maybe they're getting out physical, spread things out a little bit, make it more of a one-on-one -on -one blocking scheme. Then you don't have to win it physically. You just have to win it by position. That may open things up for your running backs. From the gun on third down, Wilson. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. You hear me laughing, partner, and I'm not laughing at the situation, but sometimes you just get yourself into a rut. It's hard to shake yourself out of it. Hey, kill, kill! And they'll try the ground game here with the running back. And he stopped immediately there. No gain on the play there. Second down. And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle, that's what we saw right there. Yeah, that's what their job is. And really, a lot of the time, they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends are like in a sprinter stance. They're just headed straight for the quarterback. That was good recognition on that play to hold him to no gain. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. Give him 10 yards on the pickup, and that's going to make it third down and less than a yard. They're trying to show that they can run the ball and protect this lead. Give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. Bree's going to try and throw on third down. Pressure comes. He's taken down by the Seahawk defense. Michael Kendricks. With a big-time sack on third down, and it'll be a loss of seven. The Broncos send out their punter now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. And they're going to fake it from deep in their own territory. And this is going to come up well short as they stop him on fourth down. A little trickeration there, but it doesn't fool them. And Seattle now ready to march out of the field. And three interceptions in this game. And I would have to think, I wasn't a quarterback, but number four is kind of, oh, you're like, oh, man, I can't throw four. Well, what's interesting is what do the coaches decide to do now? Having thrown three, do you alter your offensive strategy? Do you take the ball out of his hands and maybe turn to the running game? Or do you have that supreme confidence that he's going to turn things around? <laughs> we'll see what they do. Ten yards there to start the drive and just enough by about the length of the football for a first down. going to work this one down to about the five. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave them with a second and three. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. That's 
Again, it's Crowell. And he tried to bounce it outside, but they'll stop him behind the line. It's a loss of four. Now third down. The short field shrinks even more with the type of bodies they brought in on that play. Those extra tight ends, they weren't able to secure their blocks, and that one ended up going backwards. In their mind, certainly a field goal try would be a letdown. They had the great starting field position, now facing third down. Throwing is Wilson. The quick slant caught, and he will score. Touchdown, Seattle. In for the score. And the Seahawks are now just an extra point away from moving out in front. Janikowski on for the extra point. Janikowski good with the extra point. And that will put them on top here in the third. Out to kick is Janikowski. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And the decision to bring it out will cost him about five yards as he'll get this only back to the 20. And Denver getting set to take the field. 0-2-0-2. Breeze now on first down. He's got his tight end, Jake Bunt. And they'll get it all the way up about five yards shy of midfield. A really nice gain of 25 yards. The big play to start him out has him at the 45 already. Sammy, Sammy! Welcome back now to Denver. And we've got a dandy here. One-point game as we begin the fourth. Some good games around the league here early in week one, and this one shaping up to be as good as any of them as we come up on a first and ten. On play action, it's Breeze. And lucky to get away with one there. That one nearly picked. Second down. I guess they're in a situation now, fourth quarter, where they're forced to take some chances, but I don't know that that was the type of a chance you want to take. And that one could very easily have been intercepted. And if it does get picked off, that could possibly seal this one. Back to the air on second down. It's Breeze. And he'll find Sutton on the right side complete. 23 yards on the play. Brandon, so many times we see the crossing route start as a quick hitter, but in this play, he had time in the pocket and waited for him to clear going across. Breeze now, six for six since coming back out of the locker room. It's first and ten. Breeze to throw again. So the left side, it's complete. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. Now a play fake here on first down. Macklin's got it for a Denver touchdown. Jeremy Macklin, a 15-yard touchdown grab. And the Broncos have taken the lead here in the fourth quarter. So now a big play here as the Broncos will line up to go for two. Again, it's Breeze. And this one's caught. And their fourth quarter lead grows by a couple more.
Now McManus on to kick this one off. That's fielded in the end zone. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. And for them, a touchdown their last go-around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. There's Wilson going underneath for Crowell. And he'll go down just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. Give him two yards on that play, and it'll make it second down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. You're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. On second down, here's Wilson. And the grab made by Doug Baldwin. The 30, past the 20. And all the way in, touchdown Seattle. Doug Baldwin, 76 yards. And the Seahawks just an extra point away from tying this thing up. All right, now the Seahawks face a big two-point conversion attempt. Here's Wilson, and this is caught, and they've got the lead here in the fourth. They didn't want the tie. They roll the dice, and they take the lead. That felt like a tone setter, didn't it? Forget tying the ball game and feeling like we're just hanging with you. We're going to go ahead and push it to a one-point lead, and that just changes the complexion of the whole game. And to no one's surprise here in Denver, that'll carry through the back of the end zone for a touchback. The Broncos offense now gets ready to head back onto the field. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that. They had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would because if they were confident enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went. No adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. We saw a number of good games earlier today. This one might top all of those. It's been a dandy as we come up on first and ten. Now Breeze. Now they go screen. It's complete. Broke through some contact but unable to reach the 40. The first down screen pass good for five. For a second there, I thought that might break big. Screen pass. Looked like it was coming together. Looked like there was an opening. Still ended up with a solid game. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. It's a loss of two, now third down. Doubling this guy has to be a priority before moving up to the next level because the big fella, he just ate that one alive, just stuffed it. In fact, before the game, he was talking to us, and he's like, hey, these pants make me look fat. And we said, nah, man, you're just a whole lot of guy. He is at well over 300 pounds. He's a big man. The Broncos on third down, lacking much success. Just two for seven to this point. This is third and seven. Working from the gun, it's Breeze. Got a man open, it's Sutton. And he's got this down a yard or two shy of the 40 before he's out of bounds. They stop him for only three that time, and that'll bring up fourth down. So here now is Brandon McManus in a big spot. This for a fourth quarter lead. And this kick is not going to get there. It's short and no good. So it's an empty possession, and as a kicker, not the way you want to start your day's work. And now each team's missed a field goal here so far, Brandon, so apparently neither guy is immune.
Wilson and the Seahawks take over now. First and 10, just shy of midfield at the 48. They begin with a run by Corral. Despite the heavy running, he'll be hit and dropped shy of the 45. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Something to watch here in week one of the season? Tackling. Because you and I both know that in the preseason, a lot of these guys don't play a whole lot. Plus, the intensity and the speed really ratchets up on opening week. They run a draw here on second down, and they see right through that defensively as he'll be hit and taken down to the backfield. This will be a two-yard loss on the play, and they're going to face a third down. Steps away to his left. And Shepard, and he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. When you spend your first round pick on a pass rusher, you are absolutely counting on him to be an impact player. And there you go. Right away, he gets to the quarterback. And guess what? Likely the first of many that we're going to see from that young man. Wilson in the offense, not coming off the field. They're going for it on fourth. Right, look the team. The Seahawks will go for it. It's Wilson. He finds his man, Baldwin. And past the 35, he'll be dropped a yard or two shy of the 30. A fourth down, no problem. 19 yards that time, but now it's first and 10. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. And they'll go on the ground. And he will lose yardage back to the 34-yard line. And now this defense trying to use the clock to their advantage. They'll take the timeout here with 2.08 left. And then they'll have another stop coming up at the two-minute warning. On the counter, it's Corral. And he'll lose yardage here, back at the 41. And now the Broncos will burn another timeout here. That's going to be their second. They'll be left with one more, plus the two-minute warning. And we'll be back. Possibly a turning point. Big play coming. This is third and long. They go play action now. Wilson. 20. Oh, no. He lost the football. The Broncos say they have. Time for a break. We'll come back for the electrifying conclusion after this. a face mask certainly looked like it indeed here come the flags well when you're leading in the fourth quarter that's not the penalty you want not at all and now your discipline comes into question having poise this stage of the game you can't have those kind of plays so the face mask quite a blessing there as they'll start out of harm's way with a first and ten now a handoff it's freeman and he'll be tackled right on the chalk of the 45. 
And now the Seahawks are going to take a timeout here on defense. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. Inside the 40. 17 yards for the Broncos there as they've got themselves a first down. Probably had 60,000 thinking pass right there, including us in the booth. Yeah, no doubt about it. That was a big call, big guts on that one. And guess what? That run, it'll pay dividends. Back to back good plays have them on the move on first down. 21, 21. Ready. Go away. They'll look to throw. And the tip there altered the ball flight, and it falls incomplete. It'll be second down. He has had a great game defensively. He's been east-west, north-south, everywhere. Yeah, and I love how you described that, because to be a great defender, you have to be able to move up and back, sideline to sideline, and he's been fantastic. Reminds me of a young Charles Davis when he was playing mad. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, wow. Uh, I thought you were going to go on the field, but okay, I see you. And they'll go ground game here with a tailback. Fighting his way down to about the 35-yard line. And play is stopped here. Timeout. It's the defense calling the timeout here. It'll be their third and final timeout. So as they talk things over, we'll step aside. He'll look to throw. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. Fourth down now and defensively. Charles, you know, they're just asking this crew for one more stop. And you know that they're feeling the momentum right now, but they have to be very careful not to get over-exuberant, over-excited, and blow an assignment and give up the big first down. One score down, here we go. They're gonna go for it here on fourth down. 21, 21. Left, left, left. Back to throw. And this is caught, he hits Macklin. They keep the game alive, at least for the moment, as it's a first down. Fourth down, trailing in the fourth quarter. They felt compelled to go for it, and they got it. Well, I'd look down at my play sheet, and what I would find, plays that have been successful throughout the game that have worked in the distance you need, and that's exactly what they got done. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. He takes it across for the touchdown, and they've taken the lead late in the final minute of the fourth. Wow, wow. Wow, I know it's a never-say-never never situation, but to me, that looks like that's the one that's going to finish them off. The score that puts them in front here late, but not, you got to rally your kick team, don't you, and say the last thing we need is a big return. And what happens is guys get over-eager, get out of their lane because they're so right. excited they want to make the right. last tackle. <laughs> you mess up, could come back at you a long way. Breeze to throw. And his pass, incomplete. Tough there, good pass, hit the hands, he just couldn't bring it in. And every receiver's coach everywhere, seeing that play, focus, focus, focus. Watch it all the way in and tuck it away.
thicker the thicker the thicker the ply, thicker the ply, thicker the bag. Me and my boy and I lace and I'm beamer, I'm Brian O'Connor, I'm driving it fast. They were just hating 'cause they in the way and I'm way up and made it. The is mad, man in that bag 'cause I'm all in my bag. Why well, ain't holding on in? Just a little merle, out the cutie. I don't give a, I don't give a. Tell me why I would on the rose bar couch in my bag. Vans in my denim, denim, denim. In my denim, she was trying to. For a doubt, she don't give a. She was in her bag, Fendi and some lay. Asked for a burger, watch sh- in the front seat. That a fouled out J. We living so wild like Nas when she was on. She was on the case. We was on roll like tires. What we gon' do? I'm in my bag like. I'm in my bag, my. I'm, like, I'm, like, I'm, like, I'm really just running for money. I'm love flow, Joe chasing a check. I'm really gon' run up the money. I'm Carl Lewis, really running the best. Car moving through these hoovers, I maneuver with the bag, baby. Never feeling stress. Car moving through these hoovers, I maneuver with the bag, baby. Never feeling stress. I'm really just running for money. I'm love flow, Joe chasing a check. I'm really gon' run up the money. I'm Carl Lewis, really running the best. Car moving through these hoovers, I maneuver with the bag, baby. Never feeling stress. Car moving through these hoovers, I maneuver with the bag, baby. Never feeling stress. Bigger the bag, bigger the beef. Bigger the problem, bigger the, bigger the, be one of the, one of the, all in the same. Broke it, ended up 